Hi, everyone. My name is Adam DeHavanon. I'm one of the vascular neurologists here. And today I'm going to talk about my transition from being a physician to a physician scientist, which is a very different thing, and the disease that inspired me to do that. My story begins during fellowship when I was at the University of Washington. And at the time, I thought I would go into private practice and have a lucrative and glamorous career like other role models in the Seattle area. But as my training progressed, I encountered more and more patients with stroke due to intracranial atherosclerotic disease, or ICAD. ICAD is the most common cause of stroke in the world, but it predominantly affects minorities. It also has the highest rate of stroke recurrence. That leads to challenging and pa patient encounters because as a physician, you always want to be able to give patients hope and the prospect of them not having another stroke. With ICAD, your ability to do that is limited. For example, carotid atherosclerosis in the neck, I can get your risk of stroke down to less than 2% a year. With ICAD, the best I can do is 20% per year. You might imagine that for physicians, like myself, this leads to a sense of powerlessness. We're not able to treat our patients as effectively as we would like. This experience planted a seed for me. And I came back to the university. Oh, excuse me. Why don't patients with ICAD have better treatment? If you look at the research that the NIH has funded, it becomes quickly apparent. Carotid atherosclerosis, which predominantly affects Caucasians, had six large trials before the NIH funded a single trial on ICAT. This planted a seed for me <laughs> that I wanted to study ICAT and try to find better treatments. And with that, I came back to the University of Utah. Um, and I'd like to say that it was because of the world-class research. But in fact, it was because there are amazing work-life balance opportunities here. <laughs> that when you're, say, on an afternoon without clinic, you can escape. And you can do that all winter long. And as I progressed in my career, um, it became apparent that this work-life balance was very important. And there's really nowhere else that I know of that you can do it as effectively as here. But I was lucky to have mentors who took the patience and time to help me in those first couple years. So I'm not a PhD. I didn't have experiences in labs. My first year as junior faculty, I had a lot of silly research questions. And Jenny Majersik, the director of the Stroke Center, Dennis Parker, the past director of the Utah Center for Advanced Imaging Research, they listened to those research questions and molded them, allowing me to progress and become a productive researcher. It was also instrumental that I had support from the University of Utah. The VP-CAT program, the KL2 program, without the support of Maureen Murtaugh, Dave Turek, and Aaron Walks, I would not be up on the stage today. So I initially became dispirited, though, when I thought about ICAD as a research topic. It seemed incurable to me. This is a different disease. It's a stroke caused by a large vessel occlusion. You can see here that blood flow is stopped. Most often, this is a clot from the heart from atrial fibrillation. When I was training, we knew that if we could get a catheter into the blood vessel in these large vessel occlusion patients, we could restore blood flow. But throughout my training, we tried a number of devices, and they were all negative. In fact, harmful. I remember as a resident wishing 
that patients wouldn't get randomized to this device because we knew what happened. And then in 2013, a new generation of device came out. We are over 90% successful getting clots out and it revolutionized treatment of this different large vessel occlusion stroke. This gave me inspiration because it was an incurable disease and then became curable. When a patient comes into the hospital with a stroke, we get an MRI scan. Here you can see this bright area on the MRI showing the stroke that causes the weakness on the right side. We then get a scan to look at their blood vessels. In this patient, we see a prominent narrowing in the artery going to where the stroke is. This is diagnostic of ICAD being the cause of stroke. Normally, the workup would stop there, but at the University of Utah, we use an advanced imaging with MRI called vessel wall MRI. Instead of looking at that narrowing, we look at the ICAD plaque that causes the narrowing. In this same patient, if we zoom in, right here, you can see the plaque and it has taken up the contrast, telling us that it's inflamed. We know that inflamed plaque is more likely to cause stroke and we know that it's more difficult to treat. What we don't know is why does plaque become inflamed? And that's a very important piece of information because I can tell you that inflamed plaque is bad, but if I don't know the causative mechanism, I can't stop it from being inflamed. I had an idea and I decided to apply for a career development award. It was rejected. <laughs> I, I licked my wounds for six months and then I reapplied. It was rejected. <laughs> At that point, I was ready to throw in the towel. I had grieved enough over my brilliant ideas that weren't being given the respect they deserved, or <laughs> so I thought. And I met with my mentors and they universally said that if you are going to succeed, you will need perseverance. And I took that message to heart. The support that I got from uh, all of the five mentors that I showed you earlier inspired me to apply a third time. And this June, I received a K-23 award to study ICAD for the next five years. In the study that is funded now, we take patients who present with stroke from ICAD. You can see here another narrowed vessel and stroke on the MRI scan. We do a vessel wall MRI, and again, we see inflamed plaque in this patient. In the study, we then give them a nanoparticle that tags a cell called a macrophage. We think that this macrophage is why the plaque becomes inflamed. We scan the patient 72 hours after we give this contrast. And in patients who have plaque inflammation, thus far we have been seeing active macrophages within the plaque. Our goal is to use this to ultimately target macrophages. There are medications that suppress their inflammatory activity but first, we need this preliminary data to progress to a clinical trial. I'd like to thank the whole team that supports my research and uh, everyone here today for listening to all of us in Vitae and Dr. Rubin for the invitation to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs>